John Jones beats Francis Ngannou. This is a big narrative that's been going on after Ngannou's big win over Cyril Gan. Many fans, content creators, fighters are going to this narrative. Even Chil Sonnen made some big claims that not only that would happen, but Francis Ngannou and Cyril Gan could not even hold Jones jock. The man himself even went to Twitter and said that the fight doesn't even seem interesting to him anymore, considering that he would smash both these guys. I think this is a bit of a mistake to think this, because I believe the opposite's going on. I believe Ngannou's win over Cyril Gan, as he showed that his chances against Jon Jones are even better than before. While injured, the guy showed better wrestling than ever before, and the ability to go five rounds, winning in the later rounds, which no one even fathomed would ever happen. So how does it make sense that Ngannou showed better wrestling, and better cardio than ever before, that means now Jones destroys him. People are simply just looking at his wrestling against Surreal Gan rather than what he did in previous fights combined with that wrestling he just showed. We all know he can knock out anybody in the world with one given shot, he just couldn't hit Surreal Gan. Does it mean that Surreal Gan and John Jones are comparable? They're not comparable. The only thing about them two are, are that they're both long and they throw sidekicks. These two guys fight very differently. Jones doesn't move like Surreal Gan does, I believe Gan might be even faster than Jones in given areas, and ultimately just way different as a striker and a mover in the cage, John Jones plots, he barely moves around the cage, and also Surreal Gan's striking defense seems to be above John Jones, at least more versatile. Jones goes through the same kind of defensive techniques on the feet, using his reach as an advantage against shorter fighters, but when he goes up against someone like Alexander Gustafsson or Dominic Reyes, Ovin St. Pru, these guys who have a longer reach, he couldn't necessarily defend the shots the same and he was ultimately getting hit more, because leaning away and posting on a long opponent isn't going to work the same as it does against someone like Vitor Belfort who has a 74 inch reach, or Quentin Rampage Jackson, etc. That reach is going to be pretty much irrelevant against Francis Zagano because they both have the same reach practically, and Jones being a plotter while only going to the same kind of defenses makes him a lot easier of a target on the feet than Cyril Gan was. But when we look at the wrestling, this is what we have to point out. It's not all oh, Francis Gan was shown to be not as technical as John Jones on the wrestling. Well, he doesn't necessarily have to be as technical. Number one, he's way bigger than Jones. Number two, he's going to be stronger than Jones. And number three, he's shown that he can actually wrestle not only in the Cyril Gan fight, but also in the Stipe fight. At least now we know he has more offensive tools in wrestling, but always we knew he had defensive tools using his size as an advantage, but also technically, look how he defended Stipe's takedown and reversed. And it seems like in Gano defending Curtis Blades, take Takedowns, Kane's takedowns, and Stipe's takedowns are being forgotten. These guys are excellent wrestlers, and they could not take the guy down post the first Stipe fight. And more importantly, grapple on the ground to not give up positions, and he goes by the fundamentals, doesn't risk anything on the ground. He did that while injured, fighting on pretty much one leg, and showed the ability to go five rounds doing this. He's a striker. Usually, strikers do not have great wrestling cardio. And Ganu was gassing out more on the feet than he was in the wrestling department, which shows even further growth in his wrestling. The fact that he can hold his cardio wrestling like that, fighting off submissions, even getting taken down himself, going for huge power, high energy, expending slams, he still is able to go five rounds and almost equal Surreal Gan's cardio, who is known to be a great five round fighter. No one ever fathomed that Francis Ganu would be able to go in the later rounds, actually win those, and not gas out. And here's the thing about John Jones yes, he could shoot blast doubles, and yes, he could shoot single legs. He's done before. But Jones is a different kind of wrestler than what Stipe has shown, than what Cyril Gan has shown, than what Curtis Blaze has shown. Most of John Jones' takedowns come from the clinch, and we know how strong Francis Ngannou is and how hard he is to control in the clinch. Maybe he could trip Ngannou out, but the usual takedowns he goes to can somewhat be difficult for him, especially against someone like Ngannou. And Jones had a hard time taking down and controlling Dominic Reyes and Thiago Santos. Now he's going to be successful against Francis Ngannou while not being in his natural weight. The best ways to take down Ngannou are to shoot in a single leg to take down the bigger man one step at a time time one leg at a time right you shoot the single leg now they're balancing on one foot the strength doesn't really matter as much anymore now Engano has to fight this takedown off using only his balance rather than his natural strength this is actually how surreal Gan even took down Engano in the fifth round he had to use a single leg that's the best way to take down Engano something that Jones doesn't necessarily show in too many of his fights. The other way you could probably take him down is Blaz doubling his uber aggression. This is something that Stipe showed in the first fight where Ngannou was bum rushing him and then that Blaz double intercepted Ngannou's movement and took him to the ground. Trying to take him down from the clinch is the hardest way to go by it and it requires the most effort. I mean, Overeem's a big heavyweight and he could even budge Ngannou in the clinch. A guy who made a career in kickboxing using his clinch all while at any moment, and Ghana could put Jones' lights out. Now this fight could be competitive. Jones can be somewhat slippery on the feet. His kicks and elbows in the clinch can cause some damage. 
right? It's not the wrestling in the clinch is necessarily going to have Ngannou in trouble. It's more the versatility that Jones has with his elbows, his knees, and constantly just going into the clinch to try to wear out Ngannou, rather than constantly trying to take him down from the clinch early in the fight. That could actually cost him, but just being as versatile and active in the fight to try to gas Ngannou out. So then later, the takedowns could actually be successful, and he's going to be able to see Ngannou's punches coming from a distance a lot more clearly. What Ngannou showed in this last fight showed to me that he's the best heavyweight in the world. He potentially could be the best heavyweight of all time if you were to put anybody up against him. As I'm thinking right now, actually, besides maybe Surreal Gun with some adjustments, no other heavyweight in history has a good chance of beating him. Some people might put in uh, Fedor, but Fedor, again, gets his takedowns from the clinch. He's a lot smaller than Nganu. He can get put out with one shot. Yeah, Fedor is a lot faster than him. He hits very hard, but Nganu took some heavy shots, man, and he just never looks like he's ever hurt, right? Even Surreal Gun landed a spinning crescent kick on him. Yeah, it bounced off the shoulder a little bit, but still hit him in the head, and Nganu walked right through through it. Fedor hits hard, but I don't think he'll be able to beat Francis Zagan. I think he succumbs to that power, right? Cain Velasquez in his prime gets absolutely obliterated. JDS, kind of same thing. He gets himself too open at times, and that's very bad against Nganu. Shane Carwin and Nganu would be insane. That'd be the fight of the monsters, right? The two most powerful fighters in history going after each other. But I do think Nganu would probably win that fight. Stipe still poses a problem, but I don't think he'll beat Nganu. I honestly think the only guy that could beat him is Surreal Gun. In terms of probability, because that's the only way you could predict fights is probability and there's no absolutes. Surreal Gun has the highest chance of any fighter to beat Nganu because he's like the only guy that could outstrike Nganu and not get hit. Everybody else is a little too slow, especially with their footwork, to compete with Nganu, man. He's just way too powerful. So if I'm going to put it in somewhat of an order, I will say that Surreal Gun and John Jones might have an equal chance of beating Francis Nganu. Stipe is right after that. And then historically, everybody falls off. Maybe Shane Carwin and Brock Lesnar might come after Stipe. But Kane, JDS, Overeem, Prime Arlovsky, like all these guys get destroyed. It's almost all the same. They all don't last even around. I mean, Nganu is just a whole different kind of beast in that octagon. And with the more experience, the better decisions in the cage he's making, showing higher fight IQ every single time. So the further Nganu goes, because remember, he's still kind of young for the heavyweight division just the better he's going to be yeah but i don't really buy this whole narrative right now that off of that fight it's clear that john jones absolutely thrashes Nganu. stylistically it's a whole different kind of fight than fighting surreal gun and john jones style on paper is an easier way for Nganu to counter the wrestling who knows if that fight's going to be next if the ufc is going to try to get Nganu to stay in the organization they're probably going to throw him the john jones option at least right that seems like the only fight that Nganu has any kind of interest for but he said in the press conference that he's more looking to fight Tyson Fury than he is to fight John Jones. It looks like Fury's also up for the fight as well. So I don't really know what's going to happen here. It doesn't look like the John Jones fight might be on the table for Nganu as he's looking to explore other options. He said it's not really the money. He said it's more about like the contract itself. He doesn't like how it's structured. But hopefully they could come to an agreement because all this wrestling, all this progression in MMA, I don't want to see all of it get thrown out the window for him to pursue boxing and then for him to advance on only that kind of skill set. As an MMA fan, it is bittersweet to see him leave MMA and go to boxing because once he tastes that money the millions of dollars I don't think he's ever going to look back he pretty much conquered the mountain I mean he beat pretty much everybody Surreal Gun was like the last effort I mean the trilogy with Stipe is there that makes sense for sure but in his head he just pretty much beat everybody I mean Derek loses out there as well but he still has to climb up a little bit he still needs like a win or two Francis Agano's future is more exciting than ever before